Ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of inspiration and realness. This is also the YouTube channel vlog show of personality, positivity, and fun. This is Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977, and now the host of the show, the perpetrator of the shenanigans from his big beefy man cave in New Bedford, Massachusetts, big beefy E himself, Mr. Shenanigans, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. It's a beautiful day, beautiful Tuesday, uh, January the 10th, 2023, 2.26 p.m. What's going on, everybody? Hope everyone is having a wonderful and cool day. Uh, I want to apologize to all the boys from the Bofus and the Sofas. I know I made a comment on the live chat, movies, 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 sheesh. And it's like, you know, it was like, you know, it, I think to me, in my mind, I think it was that every time I come, I'll go on Bofus, all they do is talk about movies. I know they talk about other things, obviously. Maybe I'm not paying attention. I mean, you know, the thing is like, you know, it's like, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not mad at them or anything like that. I'm not angry or anything like that. It's like, boy, they talk about movies a lot. You know, it's like, it's like, and like everything connects to movies, so to speak. And, you know, any subject they'll talk about, they'll connect it back to movies. That's the weird part. Of the whole thing in my in my mind, it's like they always, you know, they always have a segue. And all of a sudden, well, we're gonna go back to the movies again. Oh, we do do that. In, sometimes we do that in rant and rave too. So it's like, and sometimes I want to go. Can we talk about <laughs> the movies? You know, I'm like, geez, I have not been in the movies this year. Um, this is where we count five years of, since I have not been into the movie theater at all. Last time I've been in movie theater, I think it was either 2018 of August or was it 2019 of August. I forget. I don't know if I kept all my ticket stubs. I usually kept all my movie uh, movie ticket stubs back in the day. Anyways, um, where um, yeah, I ended up uh, watching Hobbs Shot, and that's the last. Time. It was at the uh, now defunct Silver City Galleria in Taunton. I still can't believe the thing tore, tore down, man. And I'll tell you what, it would have been yeah, and last year would have been thirty years since the place opened up, but. Whatever, you know, things happen. So, my apologies to uh, Gary, Romy, Alex, and Austin Putnam. Uh, didn't mean, you know, a lot of people say, what do you mean by that? You know, I just, I just say, you guys, you know, it's like 95% of the shows, and, and sometimes we do this on Rant and Rave as well. We end up we end up making a segue about movies. It's like, can we talk about anything but movies? <laughs> sometimes I feel like, sometimes in the back of my brain going, can we talk about, can you guys talk about anything but movies? <laughs> Like all one is, you know, everybody wants to be like Cisco and Ebert all of a sudden, <laughs> and every Cisco and Eberting all over the place. There you go. That is a new. There is a new phrase I'm making up. Cisco and Eberting. That means you all want to talk about and criticize movies. Uh, there you go again. Cisco and Eberting it up. You know. <laughs> I come up with a new phrase, and it's gonna be all the craze. Let me. Let it rhymes. Good lord, Ariel's gonna get me for that one. Anywho, so I, I like I said, I sincerely, I sincerely do apologize to the both of the sofas boys. You know, you guys, you know, I love, I still love the show and enjoying it, and it, maybe, maybe I was not paying. I listen, I was not paying attention. I stepped out to cook some craft macaroni and cheese. I know Romy hates macaroni and cheese. He hates Adam Sandler movies too. But that's that's beside the point, though. You know, it, it is weird, but I think to make it up to for them, I'll probably take my. You know, do a little like uh, top of the shenanigan charts about favorite movies that I watch, like to watch something like that, just to uh, you know, just to try to you know, may maybe maybe it's like you know, movies don't interest me that much anymore because like I said, I have not been to a movie theater since um, 2018. You know, like I said, and I think when the pandemic hit, kind of scared me away from going to the theaters, and that's probably another reason. Oh, that's, yeah, I was like, uh, oh man. Flakes are coming out of my shirt. Jesus. Anyway, so uh, so I think when, uh, for a future for a future episode of the show, I'll probably do a top of the shenanigan charts. I gotta get a new top of the shenanigan chart thumbnail going, so I can uh, make sure that um, we'll be okay. So <laughs> so like I said, I'm not mad at the both of boys. I'm not angry, and I'm not bitter. And it's just I, I'm I'm just, I'm just being this cynical grump, cynical old school grump. <laughs> uh, well, at least. Well, at least I try to be as positive as I can be. So um, sometimes I can be an old, like an old school fuddy duddy. You know what I mean? Anyways, let's talk about what happened on Raw last night before things get way out of hand here on the ninth, two thousand twenty-three. Uh, uh, little notes here, a couple of notes I did. Johnny Gargano is injured. He's got um, right now. He's got a torn uh, no, or sprained AC. Sprained AC. I don't know if he's going to compete at the Royal Rumble. We'll find out if that's the case. We know AJ Styles will not. He's got a, a broken ankle. 
He's going to have to sit it out, uh, sit the sit this Royal Rumble out this year. Becky Lynch is not in attendance as well. I think she's probably um, haven't had the night off, or possibly you know taking care of her daughter. You know she is a mom, you know now. So there's another. So there's a couple of things that that will let, um, that will be a little light to shed on that. Uh, Kevin Owens kicks off Monday Night Raw. He's about to talk about how he's going to beat Roman Reigns in the Royal Rumble. And he's going to take care of Sami Zayn. But then JBL interrupts KO to the point where KO decides to, like, hide his, you know, almost falls asleep on the turnbuckle, which leads to JBL calling him a snowflake. When Baron Corbin comes out, Kevin Owens goes, I need to get my anger out on somebody since Roman's not here. You'll do. They had a matchup. They had a matchup. Kevin Owens wins it. You know. KO challenges Corbin to a match. Corbin accepts it. Oh, Kevin Owens wins the match. J the Usos and Sol Sokoa, the Uso brothers, all three, try to attack uh, Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens fights back with a steel chair. Anna Pierce says, you know what? I've had enough of you bloodliners. Here's the deal. Usos, you can leave, but Solo, Solo your butt stays here. You're facing Dolph Ziggler while one. But I, you know... But also, you know, and he decided to make a number one contenders tag team turmoil matchup. Whoever wins that faces the Usos for the tag team titles. We count out those five teams who are the Street Profits, the Judgment Days, Finn Balor, and Damian Priest. Alpha Academy, the Hurt Business is back together. Uh, that's Alexander and Benjamin and and the OC. So, uh, so we'll leave it at that. Later, oh, later on at that. Uh, Alexa Bliss comes out, stands on top of the commentary table with Corey Graves and Kevin Patrick and explains why she did what she did to Bianca Belair. And she goes, I'm in control. I will be women wrong women's champion. Uncle, Uncle Howdy interrupts her and then comes out and asks her, do you feel in charge? So Uncle Howdy will be playing some mind games with Alexa Bliss. What is going on? So, so that's all I'm going to say. Uh, women's action. Uh, Mia Yim, Mi Chen will go up one-on-one -on -one with Bailey. And Bailey decided to give Dakota Kai and EO Sky the night off, the women's tag team champions. A little bit more about EO Sky uh, towards the end of this episode. Uh, he probably said, you know, I got a crush on EO Sky. We know that. Well, it's more than that. Uh, trust me, it's a little, it's, I'll, I'll explain. I'll, I will explain. Don't worry about it. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't the big deal. Don't worry about it. So anyways, Bailey did win the matchup, though. Kathy Kelly interviews Candice LeRae. Candice LeRae. Says you know Johnny's gonna be fine and all that. You know she's he's gonna rest up, and then uh, she's thinking about going into the Royal Rumble. Ray Ripley says you know what I'm gonna go into the Royal Rumble. Is how about this? I'll put a little preview tonight. You and me. Ray Ripley goes fine. So then Austin Theory, the United States Champion, addresses the Birmingham crowd about he's the now he's the champ. Here comes you know he rips off John Cena's catchphrase. The champ is here. Here comes Seth freaking Rollins. He said, "Hey, my knee may not be, and my leg may not be 100 percent, but once it is, I'm kicking butt and taking the title." And then Theory gets in his face, tells him to get out of the ring. So Rollins leaves the ring. Here comes Bobby Lashley making his return after four weeks. He said, "My suspension's been lifted. I'm ready. I'm going into the Royal Rumble." And then Ken, uh, Candice Ray went one on one Ray Ripley. Ripley hard fought matchup. Ripley didn't win though. Uh, Byron Saxon interview was Lashley in the locker room, that, but NBP says, I, I need some time with Lashley. NBP says, hey, we're trying to get back to man to be, man back together. Listen, we know we, from a lot. And then, but then it got to the point where Lashley goes, okay, but well, I'll tell you what, though. Um, I appreciate the offer, but I'm not ready to come back. And and then MVP tells him, whenever you're ready, phone number's the same. They both fist bump with respect, walk away. So, it's not, you know, the Hurt Business could it. Here's my deal about the Hurt Business. I think I th I think MVP should keep Omos. Get Lashley. You know, Omos could be... You could have your new Four Horsemen faction right there. With Lashley, Omos, Alexander, and Benjamin. That's your new Hurt Business. Have of uh, MVP take the J.J. Dillon type role. Why not? If you need a new Four Horsemen, new version of Four Horsemen, right there. Lashley, Omos, Benjamin... Alexander. That's all I'm going to say about that one. It would be great to have, have, have a faction like that. And then they talked about um, the Cody Rhodes' uh, uh, recovery from the pectoral injury that he suffered. And he doesn't know how long. We said, well, he, he starts back in the night, right, factory. He says the, it begins now. So looks like he's working rehab and working to uh, come, come back. We don't know when he's going to come back. Possibly Royal Rumble. Who knows? Kathy Kelly interviews Dolph Ziggler. But then Mustafa Ali interrupts and says, hey, listen, we had an opportunity to be in the tag team turmoil, but you turned that down. What, what's the deal? Because, kid, you'll understand. 
Mustafa Ali was like, fine. So, and then Byron Saxon interviews Bronson Reed and The Miz, asking Bronson Reed why he accepted The Miz. He goes, listen, I like to get paid money. And Miz is like, well, we're friends and all. And then all of a sudden, Bronson Reed just got him hands off. Listen, if you need me, pay me. There you go. It looks like Miz is spending a little bit more money than usual once again. Dolph Ziggler went one-on-one -on -one with Solo Sokoa. And with the Samoan Spike tribute to Umaga, Solo Sokoa picks up the victory over Dolph Ziggler. Kathy Kelly, woman's work is never done, interviews Bailey. Meechin interrupts her saying, yeah, you know, gets in her face. And then Dakota Kai and EO Sky attacked uh, Meechin as well, sending a little message to Becky Lynch. And then Miz TV guessed with Dominic, uh, Dominic Mysterio, but the Judgment Day came in tow. He's only had, I expected Dominic Mysterio, but the more and the merrier. And he's talking about how, you know, Dominic Mysterio how it changed. And Dominic Mysterio comes out looking like freaking Conan. Well, all he is, you know, last thing, you know, you know, it's funny. He's got the mullet like Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero. Now he wants me to look at like Conan. I can, I can picture, I cannot picture Dominic Mysterio going, let me, yo, 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 let me speak on this. Oh, dale. Arriba la raza. Yo, those strawberries and the cranberries up for life. I'm like, oh, I can't imagine Dominic being like Conan. <laughs> It's just, uh, you know, it's like, listen, listen, Miz, you strawberry. You know, oh, my good Lord. <laughs> I can't picture that at all. <laughs> but then again, if you dated somebody like Ray Ripley, you know, my father, my father, Ray Ripley, if you're watching this, please don't kill me. Um, <laughs> my father called Ray Ripley. She's <laughs> ugly. I'm like, dude, I'm like this. I'm like the back of my mind. Well, if you, without the makeup, she's, she's pretty nice, but... Hey, she, you know, full on goth Miley Cyrus, man. I can understand where my father's coming from on that, but still. <laughs> you don't want to miss her at Ray Ripley, Dad. She kicked your butt. She kicked my butt, you know. <laughs> I mean, she'll kick my butt so much. What happened to you, son? Oh, I told her, I told her what you said about her, and she beat me up for it. <laughs> oh, oh, good Lord. Uh, God bless my dad. Anyways. Uh, so, anyways, Dominic Mysterio's like, oh, the prince has changed me, and I'm a bad... And Miz says, you were there for a few hours, and Finn Balor and Davey Priest ready to beat up the Miz. I said, you better get, better get that money off of Bronson Reed, because you're going to need it, you know? So, Miz was smart enough to get out of the ring when the OC came out, though. So, the gauntlet, uh, so the tag team turmoil gauntlet match began. It was Judgment Day. Now, Finn Balor and Damian Priest against the OC, Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson. Judgment Day picks up the victory. Her business comes out. Cedric Alexander, Shelton Benjamin. Judgment Day beats him. Then you go, then the Alpha Academy. Now, this is where things got really, really hairy. I mean, the first half of the Gauntlet match, they did well. But then after they beat the Alpha Academy, Bill was willing to sacrifice. Uh, Finn Balor had Chad Gable on top of him. And, to, and while Otis was done, the Mastodon bomb. But then Finn Balor was hurt. He said, I'm fine. I'll be in there. But then Adam Pierce says, you know what? You know, he made a ruling that Dominic's going to replace uh, Finn Balor, and then Damian Priest goes, fine, we can handle it, right? So, but then Finn Balor's like, okay with it, fine. You know, even Ray Ripley was not worried, a little bit worried. Then when they went up against the Street Profits, and the Street Profits, and, and then a little chicanery happened, Judgment Day ends up winning that one. So, the winners of Tag Team Toronto is Judgment Day. The Usos confront them, holding up the belts. And and here's um here's where I am going to make my prediction. Uh, I was going to go back to talk about EO Sky for a minute. Uh, they said oh, I said something about EO Sky. It, it, they say oh it's more of a crush. Uh, it's, it's like it, yeah I have, I have a bit of a crush on EO Sky. But here's the thing. This is what I'm going to talk about. It's my 2023 WWE predictions. EO Sky will win the Royal, Women's Royal Rumble. And if she does not do that, she'll win the Women's Money in the Bank. Or if she does not, she'll win. If they decide to bring back the Queen's Crown tournament, she'll win that. But all in all, 2023, EO Sky will walk out with a championship. I know she's right now one half, uh, one third of the NXT Women's, I mean, not NXT, uh, WWE Women's Tag Team Champions with Dakota Kai. No problems there. I'm talking about individual championships. She's already a former NXT Women's Champion and also a former NXT Women's Tag Team Champion with, with Zoe Stark. And my prediction is that EO Sky will walk out with either Raw or SmackDown Women's Championship. Either way. Even if she, if she doesn't win the Royal Rumble or Money in the Bank or win the Queen's Crown Tournament. But 
I'll guarantee you, every path will lead to a championship. Either Raw or SmackDown Women's Championship. That's why EO Sky is going to walk out with one of those two championships. That's it. If not, both. If not, both. She'll probably, she'll probably win the Raw Women's title first, lose that to somebody, and then go to SmackDown, win the Women's Championship. Then I think she'll... EO Sky will, will, will wipe the floor. That's what I'm thinking. EO Sky is just too good of a talent... To be part of a women's tag team, and I get it, you know, part of the faction, and she's done pretty well. I'm sure she's getting help from Bailey and Dakota Kai. But I think once she's on her own, she'll be winning a championship. That's my prediction for 2023 for EO Sky. EO Sky is going to walk out with a championship, okay? So, so that's all the time we have on this episode 285 of Eric Lehman Shenanigans of 1977. Again, my apologies to the Buffalo Boys. Well, my little comment last night uh, on the live chat last um, yesterday, um, last night, yesterday, whatever, uh, five o'clock yet, late afternoon, early evening. Um, but now I'm and but I understand why you guys do it. You know, like talking about we just want, like I say, you know, you gotta understand where I'm coming from. That's okay. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. It's just a, you know, kind of like the sheep is. I'm I'm like wow. They, he's like, do they ever spend time? Yeah, I think in the back of my mind, you're thinking, you know, like every segment that they do. It's like it all goes back to movies. That's that's probably what we like. Every we all segue. It's like it segues back into a major subject. You know, I don't know. Probably, probably the segue thing. Maybe that's me. Anyway, so yeah, I do appreciate uh, everybody tuning in. And like I said, tonight's NXT New Year's Evil. We know Braun Breaker will defend the NXT title against Grayson Waller, and it's going to be a heck of a matchup for sure. Uh, also, the twenty. Women battle twenty women's battle royal uh, to decide the number one contender Roxanne Perez's uh, NXT Women's Championship, which will be defended at Vengeance Day. So we'll find out the identity of the, of the lady that always counts down the year. My guess would be Tiffany Stratton, or it could be somebody new. who knows. If it's Tiffany Stratton, Grayson Waller, focus on the championship. <laughs> uh, I don't know why Michael Mabardi complains about Grayson Waller sleeping with Tiffany Stratton. You know. That's just me. So, we'll find out. All right, so that's all. So, on the next episode, though, however, Trebek Tuesday, High Rollers. Let's see what happens, okay? Until then, Mr. Announcer, could you please take us home to our new outro? That's why I have a new intro and outro. And you know, I changed my profile on my YouTube. We're going to have some fun. Peace out for now. See ya. Take us home, Mr. Announcer. That is all for today's episode of the show. This is Mr. Lima speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, do it for Bob Saget production. And in association with a sweet bowl for raving dingleberries, telepictures, and distribution. Thank you for watching another great episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Until the next episode, goodbye for now.